Hi everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today we are in my bedroom and we're gonna be talking about closet doors that are not there right now. Not that this was a fail, at least I hope it wasn't. They're just outside airing out because they have some very stinky wood stain on them and I cannot sleep with them in the same room. So hopefully they'll be good to go and it won't be like a total and complete fail. Anywho, um, this project was really hard because I did not get a lot of help from my husband like I usually do with harder projects. So I was super overwhelmed and very intimidated, especially by the hardware and the door installation. So if you want to learn how to make doors on a budget from scratch and install everything, then keep watching. I'll show you how I did it. Okay, so first I made a trip to my local Home Depot and bought some 2x2s. These were only $1.82 each, however, I had to go through a whole pile to get the straighter ones. Next, my hubby used our table saw to split them in half. He cut them like this because I had originally planned to frame fabric between the two pieces, however, I did change my mind later on. Before cutting my wood pieces to size for each door panel, I measured the width of my closet opening and divided it into four. Then I subtracted one fourth of an inch from each side of each door panel and one fourth of an inch from the top and bottom of each door panel. This allowed room for brackets between doors and space for the doors not to drag on the floor. I even used some poster board that I cut to size to help envision the width of each door. To cut all my wood to size, I used my miter saw. Here's what the panel looks like before I secured it all with screws. First, I was thinking to add screws from the sides like this, but this wouldn't work because I don't think it'd make it really strong. Um, if you don't have a table saw to split your 2 by 2s like we did, you can try it like this. But since we already split it, I did it a bit different to make the panels more sturdy. To begin, for the sides of each panel, I made the bottom pieces of my split wood longer and the top were shorter. Then, for the top and bottom of my panels, I cut a shorter piece of my split wood to go on the bottom and a longer one to go on top, kind of like a puzzle. Then you simply add screws from the top to secure all the pieces together. It felt pretty sturdy this way. I feel like you can also add more screws if you cut it this way. Um, okay, once I secured all my panels, I added a piece of wood in the center to make it even sturdier. I measured 11 inches from the top and marked the distance on both sides. Then I pre-drilled some holes and added long screws to secure it. I did this on the top and bottom of my panels. Okay, so here's the stinky wood stain I used. I love the way this stuff looks, however, the smell is almost not worth it. I didn't use any clear coat on top of my stain because I knew it wouldn't be visible and I hope that's not why it stinks so bad. I applied an even coat and wiped it off almost immediately. I didn't let it sit for too long. Okay, next for my choice of fabric, I went with this light colored burlap. I made a trip to Joanne's fabric and bought five and a half yards of burlap. Since I wanted to mimic natural weaved wood, I decided to stain the burlap because it was a bit too light in color and yellow. To stain it, I used some of this coffee latte and white acrylic paint. I added a bit of water to a bucket, then I mixed in some paint. Once I got the color I needed, I added way more water so I could cover all the burlap with this mixture. It was pretty diluted once the rest of the water was added. Before you stain all your burlap, don't forget to make a swatch test to see what color it is. Also keep in mind, it does become a few shades darker once it dries. To apply my stain, I line my concrete floor with some plastic and lay out my burlap. Then I simply brushed on the stain pretty generously. To help dry it quicker, I threw my fabric in the dryer for a few minutes. I know the color on my stain didn't look like it would make much of a difference, but here's what the stained fabric looks like once dry. There is quite a noticeable difference, very mild and natural. Next, to attach my fabric to the panels, I cut the fabric to size for each panel and ironed it before attaching. I used my stapler to attach the top and bottom of the fabric first. We will need to stretch it pretty tight while doing this. Following that, I found it worked best if you attach one whole side of the panel, not really stretching, and once you move on to the other side, stretch tightly when attaching. This seems to give the fabric a nice tight fit. To finish off your edges, add staples in the corners, then pull the edge of your fabric down and staple. That's it. Okay, here are the hinges I used. 
They are made for closet doors. That's what I was told at Home Depot. <laughs> I measured 14 inches from the top and secured my hinge with the screws provided. My hubby made me some handles for the doors as well that I spray painted and installed. Okay, the hardest part. This was the most intimidating part for me. Here's what the hardware looks like installed. It was cut in the middle because I had to use two sets of hardware since our closet opening was too big for one set and we actually had to cut them down a bit since our opening was too small for the two sets. So confusing, but yeah. The instructions required the spring in the middle if you're combining two sets of hardware and these metal stoppers were already in there. To adjust your closet doors, you can loosen this screw and this metal slider moves back and forth. And yes, you can actually even do this while your doors are installed. You can see the slider from the inside. To install the doors, I drilled holes and added the plastic stoppers on both doors at the top, about two inches from the edge of each door. One of the stoppers goes in the plastic slider and the other one goes into this metal slider. On the bottom, I added this plastic stopper with a metal tip that adjusts the height of your door when you unscrew it. This metal stopper goes at the bottom of your door where you'll need to install this metal bracket that has little teeth to hold your metal stopper. It's pretty simple <laughs> once you get it. To install your door, insert the two top plastic stoppers into place first, then slide your metal stopper into place at the bottom. And that's it. If you ever need to make or install some closet doors, hopefully this video will give you an idea of what needs to be done. This was my very first time working with a build like this, and honestly, I think I would do it again. This was fun. If you've ever done this before, I would love to know your tips. That's it. Thank you so much for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.